The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. What's up, everyone? This is Connor Garrity of All Hail the Yeti. You're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. And as always, I'm bringing you guys awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to have Mr. Connor Garrity. He is the vocalist of All Hail the Yeti. New album, Highway Crosses, is released today, actually, via Minus Head Records. So, how's it going, Connor? I'm doing great. How are you doing, man? Doing awesome. Glad to have you on the show. Been wanting you guys on here for a very long time, actually. Oh, awesome, man. It's a pleasure. So, let's jump right into this. The Nuclear Dust is the first single off oh. the album, Highway Crosses. What was it about this song to be a single, or were there another song close to being the first single? Because I know you said The Nuclear Dust is a heavy song from you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always a it's always a, a kind of a pain in the ass to decide which, song, which is the first one to release. We released a song called Slow Season back in February last or this year mm-hmm. because the record was supposed to be coming out sooner than it did, and we, wanted, we were going on a tour, and we wanted to get that out. And... We, we just decided that we wanted to put out one of the heavier ones first just because we didn't want to uh, surprise anybody with anything too too far off from what we've done. So yeah. um, that was one of, the, one of the songs in the studio that we were like super pumped about. And I think we finished it first and everybody was just, you know, just digging it. So we, that's what we picked. But it's cool, though, that you guys are going down, a, you know, a heavier side, which is awesome from you guys, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, um, you know, we like to kind of mix it up and, and not, you know, not just keep everything the same. So we definitely have like less heavy songs and more catchy and definitely heavier than that as well. What's impressed or excited you the most about working on the new album? What's caught your eye about, if anything, the most, man? Honestly, working with Warren Riker was one of, was definitely the highlight for me. He's just such an amazing talent and just a, like such a cool dude and he's become like, honestly, what, you know, the fifth member of the band and, it was just an honor to be able to work with him because he was supposed to mix our first record way back in 2012. And for whatever reason that fell through, but then we were, you know, when it came time to look for producers for this, I threw his name in the hat and it ended up working out. So it was, it was just great how it, how it ended up happening. Yeah. And plus guys, for anyone out there that who doesn't know who Warren Riker is, he's a Grammy nominated producer and, and winning producer, I should say. And plus, you know, he's worked with yeah. down crowbar cynic, and the UK's Cathedral, so he he's no stranger to putting great stuff out there. <laughs> no, not at all. How was working with him, though? Did he push you guys harder uh, than anybody else, or did he just let you do your thing, then step in? He was kind of just, like, part of it, you know? It wasn't like he was, like, sitting back being a producer and, like, barking orders or anything. It was like he was in the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you know, at that point, you know, songs were written and we'd gone back and forth with just some ideas and stuff. But then we got into the studio and it was time to, like, really dissect them and, and make them into what they are now and what you guys are hearing now. And he just, like, you know, there's some points where, you know, one person throws an idea in and it sticks and everybody likes it. And there's another time when it happens and we're like, no, he didn't, like, get, you know, like, some people get butthurt if you, turn, you know, if you disagree on what they say or you don't listen to what they say. Some producers are very, like... I'm this producer and I, you know, you better listen to me. Otherwise this and this and this. And he just wasn't like that. He's just positive. I mean, definitely, he definitely worked us and, you know, but in a way that he was able to pull the best, you know, the best outcome out of every one of us. Are there any songs off this new album, Connor, that stand out more to you than any on as of right now? Possibly. I mean, I know these are like picking your favorite collectible or child, but do these stand out for you? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, Highway Crosses is a, is a really fun one to play live. You know, we've just started to like we're integrating all the songs into our set, and that, that one really is was really fun for me. It was, we wrote it with my friend Jarrell from Hollywood Undead, and it really turned into be like one of my favorites for sure. What do you hope the fans take away from this new album, or or just the message you hope they hear while listening to any of your guys' music? We've always kind of just you know strive to be different and not do what everybody else is doing. So that's what I want people to notice and to not be afraid of that and not be afraid to, 
to uh, stand out. And um, maybe that kind of like could, could cross over into just people's everyday lives. It's not making, you know, it's nothing wrong with being different and doing something different and going against the grain and, and not conforming to what everybody else or what's popular or what's cool, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's probably the biggest thing for me. Yeah, you're right, man. Folks are afraid to go outside their box. They're afraid to be different, and they're they're afraid to be, I, I guess, you know, belittled because they they're different than someone else. Fuck that. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's your stuff. It, it, you know, just because you like something doesn't mean someone else is gonna like it, and that's fine. That's the way it should be. Of course, of course. And a lot of it, you know, stems from you know a certain a certain genre of metal will get will get popular at one point, and you know it happened with new metal. It happened with metalcore. And yeah, it worked for, you know, the certain few bands that did it. And, you know, all of a sudden all these bands are trying to do something that, you know, that somebody already did. And it's just like, well, why don't you try to do something different and be, you know, be a standout in a, in a, in a genre of copycats and cookie cutter shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed too, man, like over the years, rock and metal, it's all kind of stayed the same and, the, and, and everything comes back in waves. It's like a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Everything comes back at a Absolutely. certain point. Yeah. I dig it. How much growth musically have you seen this band and plus yourself go through up to the release of this album or just has it just been more of a personal growth for each of you guys involved in this? There's been a lot, you know, a lot of like songwriting growth, growth for sure on um, personalities and, and, and myself definitely, you know, like if you flash back to 2012 when our first record came out, those were the first, you know, 10 of the first songs that we ever wrote as a band. And some of those were written with, you know, five and six different people because of, you know, when we're starting out, we knew different members and this and that. So these last two records were written by the, you know, by Alan and I and the band, you know, obviously, sorry, not Alan and I, but Alan and I start the writing and then we bring it to the band and then it becomes what it became. So they definitely are, I think, a little bit more cohesive as a, as a, as a unit than the first record, but the, so I think as you as you write more music and with anything in life, the more you do it, the more you get experience and the, the better at it you get. And for us with this record, it was, you know, we knew that we had to really do something and, and, and step out of the box and, and outdo ourselves. So we were definitely like working very hard to, to bring something different to the table and, and, and quality. And that was a big thing for us to make sure that we were doing something that was worthwhile. When you go into the recording studio, do you do anything differently during that writing and recording process to, you know, help keep your mind fresh and open to, to newer stuff, to not let the music get stale? Do you do anything differently, maybe? I, I don't really, you know. I mean, I tend to try not to listen to what's popular right now. That's about it. Like, I don't really want to get, just with that same thing about like, oh, yeah, or, you know, whatever band's hot right now, these bands are doing this, but, you know, let's copy that. So I tend to stay away from, from listening to, like, newer music or anything that's come out because I don't want to be influence or, or like pulled in any direction without you know without knowing it mm. so we definitely like just kind of like keep to ourselves and keep our eyes to the ground and, and do our own thing what can fans expect at a show from the mighty all hell the yeti when they come out to see you guys live <laughs> pure energy a good time we've always you know our live show is that's where that's where the band is, is meant to be seen and heard you know we've always done our best to to make sure that people have a good time when they come and you know and and not be it doesn't have to be super violent, you know, but it's great when people are going crazy and mosh <laughs> it. But friendly violence is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we're living in the digital era of recording albums and plus social media. Do you like this to get albums yeah. out quicker and plus social media to reach out to more fans who have not possibly got to hear of, of All Hell the Eddie, maybe? I think that it's a double edged sword. Okay. While there is these tools that are free for us to use and they you know, it makes it very easy to reach a lot of people a lot easier. It also makes it very, it makes it kind of takes the mystery out of bands, you know, like back when I was growing up, if I ever wanted to know anything about a band, I had to wait for a magazine to come out and an, and an article by somebody to like really understand or like, and then that was what I believed because that's all I knew. Right. So I definitely think that that like whole mystery kind of like superhero vibe of, of like rock and roll was, is missing nowadays. And I think that was really important for the, for like the toughness of it and like the scariness. So while on the other hand, there's all these free tools to to like promote yourself that, that we didn't have back then, you know, and if you weren't signed and you didn't have a big label push and you you weren't getting in any of these magazines. Now, all you got to do is make a magazine yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So like I said, it's like a, you can't have one without the other anymore. And 
I think that it's, like I said, a necessary evil that everybody needs to kind of just learn how to use and use it as a tool to like, and that goes for, for listeners too, you know, if you don't know any new bands, so get on, get on a website or get on a, a streaming site and type in a band that you like and look into the related artists. It's so yeah. easy to find good new music now. And it's just all right there at your fingertips. There's no reason to be not excited about what's out there because there's so many good bands and so many easy ways to find them. Yeah. I'm like you, man. I, mm-hmm. I had to wait for hit parader or circus magazine. To, <laughs> totally. Yeah. To, to metal maniacs, hit parader. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Just to find out who, you know, where guns and roses was going to be or what they were up to or Motley Crue back in the day. Yeah. You know, and, oh, yeah, and, and like you said, now you just type it into Google. It's right there. Mm-hmm. They're, they're slash having a steak at the, at the, at the steak. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't care if he's eating steak. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what kind of steak. <laughs> well, okay. There you go. <laughs> Does he put ketchup on it or not? Hmm. That's the question. Hmm. Mm. Oh God. He better not. <laughs> Oh, man, so what, in your own opinion, man, what does All Hell the Yeti bring to the table for music that's not out there possibly as of right now, if anything? I mean, it, this comes back to like a, what I said before. It's like we're doing something different. And and if you're tired of the cookie-cutter, metalcore, like, same shit that you've been hearing from all these other bands, that's what we're doing. We're trying to do something different and do something interesting. And, and it's always been our, like, big, our biggest goal is to, like, stand out you know, amongst, amongst, the, amongst the crowd. And eventually I think it'll pay off. You know, our biggest nemesis, it's always been like, even when we're, you know, shopping and trying to get a deal back then, all these labels are like, well, we don't really know how to classify you. You don't sound like anything else. And you're either, you're, you're not heavy enough to be extreme metal and you're not, you're not, you're not soft enough to be active rock. And, and I'm just like, well, isn't that a good thing? Like, yeah. isn't that what people look for? Like they want something different that doesn't sound like anything else. So, and we've just stuck to that. You know, we've always just kind of like wanted to keep our, our influences there and, and try to try to com- incorporate as much as we can from what we grew up listening to and, and just be our own band and not be another band. That's like 36 Crazy Fist. You know, they're, they're in a league on, all to their self. I mean, that band is, yeah. Jesus. My boys. Yeah, buddy. Those guys are fucking yeah. love them. Love thirty six crazy. Fans. Legend, they're, they're legendary, man, and that's the thing. Is like back when when they when they first got their their start, that was when new metal was in its like heyday, you know. And they weren't they weren't, they weren't rapping or doing any DJs or anything like that. They were doing their own thing, and they were they managed to like to stand out. And here they are, twenty five years later, twenty three years later, yep. still doing it. Yep, exactly. It's all about perseverance and you know pushing through and and sticking to your guns and doing what you love because you love it. What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you, man? Vince Neil, Molly Crew, 1983. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Molly Crew in general, and Kiss, mm. and Van Halen. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, I have three older brothers. Two of them are quite a few years older, and they were into you know Van Halen and a lot of that stuff when it came out. And I was pretty young back then, so it wasn't like, I was just whatever they were listening to I thought was cool. But by the time... I was old enough to like read a magazine and look at it and you know, Motley Crue to me were like they were the they were the badasses. They were the scary ones, you know. I, I still remember opening up Shout at the Devil and just being like um, like like mesmerized by the way they looked and how cool and like scary and tough and like it was just that was it for me and like that's what I wanna do. That's what I wanna be, you know? And then yeah. that that was it. And then, you know, the record obviously like it's it, you can't touch it. It's one of the best that's ever been put out, so is there a country that stands out or shocks you that all hell the Eddie gets support from possibly? Is there one that sticks out the most for you? Poland. Ah. Never. We've only been to Poland once. And when we went there, it was our first time. And we were with 36 Crazy Fists. And we didn't know we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, it was Eastern Europe. And a little club in Warsaw. And <laughs> we hit the stage. And it was like complete chaos in the venue. Like the kids were going crazy jumping on the stage moshing kids were getting hurt and it was just like man this is awesome and we had an amazing night and it was just like such a surprise because we'd never been there we didn't even knew that people knew who we were and now we want to go back <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you guys get this a lot and i'm i'm going to ask anyway but what's it mean to you connor when you receive an email from a fan or prior to the shows or after the shows they tell you that all hell the yeti's music has gave them the inspiration to overcome obstacles 
or it's just made them get away and relax of the everyday bullshit that we go through. What's it mean to you guys if that's happened? You know what? That's like one of the best feelings I've ever that you can ever have. You know, between that and seeing people sing your lyrics back to you when you're playing, we get we get responses like that. Whether it's an email or a Facebook message or anything, or someone telling us that at a show, it's you know, because that was me. That was how I was when I was listening to music. You know, back when Pantera was doing their thing and Life of Agony, and like you know, I used that music to to escape my reality of life and high school and bullies and dickhead people. And, and I knew that, you know, when I started doing this, I was like, I, one day I want to be that for somebody else. So, and to know that I am now, whether it is two people or, you know, 2000, if my music and my music and our lyric, my our music and my lyrics can, can help somebody escape, then I'm doing my job right. And that's all that matters. I just like to say, as a fan of All Hell the Yetis for a while now, thank you guys for what you have contributed to the music language, as I call it. So thank you guys so much, man. Oh, man, you're welcome, and thank you for listening and supporting. How can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy this new album that's out today, tour dates, merchandise, how can they do that, Connor? Everywhere. Is, you can find everything on our Facebook, um, All Hell the Yeti, or Facebook.com official All Hell the Yeti. Or the easiest way is Google All Hail the Yeti and you'll be able to find everything. Our album is on iTunes. It's on Spotify. You can stream it. You can buy it. Bandcamp, Minus Head Records, YouTube. It's everywhere. I mean, it's it's such an, a unique name that if you type it in, you're definitely going to be able to find us pretty easily. Before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Of course. What's up, everyone? This is Connor Garrity of All Hail the Yeti. You're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bods Mayhem Hour and Bods Mayhem Radio Network. Please go out and check out our Facebook, Bods Mayhem Hour. We've got our podcast link and plus our YouTube link on there where you guys can check out everything. But also, please go out and check out all Hell the Yeti stuff. If you haven't got to listen to them, please go out and give them a chance. I'm pretty sure you're going to dig this band. Thank you so, so much, Connor, for being on the show, man. Right on. Thank you, man.